Greetings, Starlighter fans, and welcome back to the European Division of Starlighter Season 10. We're getting here to the bitter end. We've got Day 29 coming at you. I'm Zayori, joined by Blaze, the master of the ghetto cast himself. Blaze, we're back to normal, buddy. How you feeling? Feeling pretty good. I got 16 hours, uh, 6 and then 9, so uh, yeah, I guess a 15. Okay, maybe my brain's not all awake just yet, but we'll see. Uh, for now, I'm really happy to be guests in Starlighter with you, man. Europe is always a very interesting region where we get to see these dynamic playstyles clash, and of course, it's always a fun time. So, Power Rangers, they're going to open up the global strat here. Nature's Prophet and IO and Virtus Pro have the Death Prophet to, for their really just kind of meta relevant first pick, still really feeling the Death Ball there. But I would not be surprised to see a Priestess of the Moon or Marana pick up as their second. That Jotam Potum, can't forget about it. But, you know, I, I'm still surprised at how powerful Death Prophet is, man. I remember seeing those patch notes and everyone telling me, oh, all these changes to the pushing meta are more than enough. She doesn't need anything else. And <laughs> I'm starting to disagree with that statement, I think. She's still looking just as strong as ever, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean, maybe not as strong. There are definitely more vulnerable points in her general game sense. Like, uh, obviously, the greater time period where Exorcism is unavailable the more time that the enemy has to press vulnerabilities, to relocate gank, to teleport and push. I mean, Power Rangers definitely have a lineup that has quicker cooldowns and is able to fight a lot more readily than VP will be prepared for if they're just relying, relying on the Virtus Pro Death Prophet alone. Mm -hmm. But that said, uh, they can just pick up other cores, other heroes that do things uh, less sporadically, going in with more consistent damage output and uh, less cooldown dependency will generally help their game plan. But for now, they're going to open up with uh, a strategy and a synergy that we've seen quite a few times. The center of the Death Prophet, you get the Stampede out, you make sure those spirits are always in the range you want. You kind of are able to play defensively enough with the max movement speed to keep, to keep a zone between Ten yourself and your remaining. target. So you can still do damage without really being right in the face Five of whatever melee remaining. hero Power Rangers wants to pair up with that IO. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So uh, let's just take a time. glance at the grid here, as this is the stage in the group stage when uh, things get very interesting. And today uh, we'll have a couple of deciding games. We've got a big one, uh, which is maybe not that decisive given these teams are both at the top, but it will be uh, Secret versus Tinker is our second game of the day, which will be a clash of the Titans for sure. Uh, they're in positions one and two. Radiant After that, team we'll bad. have Secret versus Virtus Pro, a game that they'll pretty much need to win. Virtus Pro 6 and 4, they still have a chance Virtus at making Pro's it into the top to 4, but they need some serious wins today. They certainly need this win over Power Rangers, uh, and if they upset Radiant over Secret, Team things Band. could get very, very interesting as we look forward here, Blaze. Most definitely. But uh, it's going to be a hard run to not only take down Power Rangers guaranteed as well as taking down Team Circuit. So we'll have to look forward to those matches and see if they really can just make it one of their, their best days of Dota yet. Because we have seen some amazing things Five from Virtus Pro, remaining. but they do definitely have their off days. And we have to kind of take the good with the bad here. It's all about Reserve minimizing time. your losses when you're on that down streak. And then obviously playing to your fullest potential when you're really up and on the bend. So we'll see what Virtus Pro we get to see today. Hopefully Virtus Pro and not Virtus Throw. But uh, for now, uh, early momentum should be attained through the timing where Death Prophet gets an early tier one. Centaur War Runner gets the Blink Dagger. And that's going to be a, a peak time period where they can really just crush whatever PR brings. But it's a little early in the draft to know the full tempo of the game. So we're going to look at the bands. See the Naga, Siren, and Phantom Assassin ban out. They don't want to have to worry about being hugely pressed for time. Radiant Those ticking time bombs with Phantom Assassin hitting about four slot status, being nearly indestructible and uh, very destructive in her own right. And the Naga Siren, of course, we, we know her. We love her or hate her. Either way, it's very polarizing and it's... Uh, nice to see her band out here, along with the Spectre and Faceless Void. Yes, sir. Uh, so a bunch of carries taken out, as that's something both teams are lacking. We'll see what Power Rangers grab first, and it is the Fairy Dragon Virtus Puck. Probably Pros their, uh, maybe their safe lane hero. Interesting mix of, mix of heroes. I uh, would reckon mm -hmm. that the Nature's Prophet will head offline, and more often than not, you'll see Wisp paired with his tether buddy for a dual lane mid. So uh, maybe it'll just be a safe lane tri lane. Maybe it'll be an aggro tri with profit in the safe uh, in the safe lane and puck in the mid. Pretty uh, open ended draft for Power Rangers. Yeah, I really like the puck pick. It's very astute to the fact Ten that Death Prophet and Centaur are all about mobility, all about choosing your position against your opposition, Five and puck can shut that down pretty easily with the dream coil. They can't stampede away from that one. And along with that, 
If you just He's walk into a lane, team. hit a two-man dream coil, you immediately have the response team. You have the A-team coming in with Io and his relocate buddy. You have the Nature's Prophet teleport, and you jump, and you have a guaranteed double kill right there. So Puck can set things up very easily with his ultimate, and it's a short cooldown. The big thing here is all of Power Rangers heroes are very short in cooldowns. I don't think one is above uh, a minute. Obviously, the early ranks in uh, the Earth. Wrath of Nature and the Relocate are a little bit up there, but it gets down, Radiant it goes down very quickly. Pick. So 85 seconds is going to be their timer, and obviously that's significantly less than the Death Prophet's 135. So there's going to be better timing windows for Power Rangers. They're going to have the better initiation across the map because Puck can not only escape very well to avoid that, but once he wants to play aggressively, they just flip a switch and suddenly the team fight's there. So a lot of cool potential there. I'm curious if Sven's actually going to be Io's uh, battle buddy, if they're going to be relocating together, or if it is one of those supportive Sven's. In either case, yeah. uh, I think there's some real potential with uh, the Cheshire Cat offlane Nature Prophet since he loves to be very active across the map. And then, uh, as you mentioned, Puck could go safe and let the dual lane mid, or they can pretty much just let that lie as they will. Yeah, uh, we've seen Sven in a pretty equal spread, a position four versus the position one, and he, he's pretty good in, in both roles, to be Ten perfectly frank. Uh, power of the War Cry makes him a pretty solid support, and uh, now with the Five bottle changes, and remaining. him and Wisp could each grab a bottle if their tether buddies move around, get all that mana, and start throwing storm Reserve bolts. Hell, Sven might not even need one if uh, Wisp has all the... The runes on lockdown, and that could open it up for Puck into safe lane. Uh, a lot of options here. Uh, but Virtus Pro, they'll end up with Ten the Earthshaker. So all about the movement. Uh, they've got the fast movement speed, and they've got uh, the old ground pounder remaining. to knock them down and keep those fissures coming. Back. Now, ooh, Disruptor, the pick for Virtus Pro, always a good choice against global heroes, both Nature's Prophet, Wisp, and really Puck for that matter. Anybody that can traverse a long distance very quickly uh, suffers against the power of Disruptor's glimpse. 10 seconds remaining. Yeah, be able to bounce people back and also able to lay a bit of a trap here. I mean, if you Five think about it, Centaur can remaining. easily blink on top of wherever they see the relocate coming, get a very quick hoof stomp, and you can also lay down the kinetic and static time. right where those heroes are going to pop up. So even when they bring them in, if you're prepared, you can send back the Nature's Prophet, who can choose where he's teleporting to, and the other two can be dealt with in an AoE fashion, saying, okay, you guys are clumped together in this tiny little spot. What can we do with that? And usually it's going to be met with hoof stomp, double edge, and crypt swarm. And that's going to be an easy double in the other direction. So it's all about really who out my games the other. If a Power Rangers feel confident in initiation and Virtus Pro is waiting in the wings, waiting for them to jump with those global abilities, they can absolutely turn the fight around. But if uh, Power Rangers finds that vulnerability and exploits it, and Virtus Pro isn't prepared, then they're just going to be dropping Virtus down to Pro these global strats, and they're going to have to stay together as five very, very frequently. Yeah, I like this final band from Power Rangers, taking out the Medusa. Some good synergy with the Death Prophet there. And just an all-around strong hero right now, as you and I have seen uh, in days prior. And uh, I'm sure there have been many of <laughs> other instances uh, exclaiming Medusa's power. Uh, Power Rangers, I, if they wanted to be a little more greedy Five here, I feel like they could remaining. try to go for something like a Sand King or one of those supports that can make a lot of use out of the Radiant jungle and just pick. open up a lot of farming in these lanes. Give Puck mm -hmm. most of the solo farm down bottom, give Prophet that off lane, and then you have this great duo lane uh, in in the mid. And I think that could work out if that's the route they want to go. Uh, I suppose Rubik could be a decent option for Power Rangers here as well. Plenty of big spells worth stealing. Yeah, it depends on how much pressure they feel they're under. If they feel like they're going to be hard pushed in around like the 10 to 20 minute mark, Rubik is really, really strong because he can still Crypt Swarm and absolutely destroy the push. But uh, I do like the idea of J4 Sand King. I mean, he remaining. uses the jungle very efficiently, and once he gets active with that Blink Dagger, there's a lot that he can bring to the table, and Reserve it just further time. increases their range of initiation and emphasizes the fact that they are running on a low cooldown lineup. So... Uh, we'll see. Uh, right now there are a couple good silences on the board, which kind of frustrate the Sand King quite a bit. The silence from Death Prophet, the silence from Disruptor's Ultimate, all make it a little bit difficult to use his skills in an escape mechanism fashion, Ten but you know, anything is viable. We'll see what they want to go with here with the last five, five seconds, seconds ticking me. down for PR. And Morphling, interesting. Morphling. Okay, so it is a so support spin. Yeah. Turn to pick. Um, all right, so the problem with support Sven in this kind of a scenario is Puck will want to Puck and Profit both will want a safe lane, so he can't really just sit in lane and leech too much experience from them. Uh, it'll mostly be the Puck that'll suffer on that front. Maybe they'll do just a good old-fashioned safe lane try and keep the Morphling and Wisp in lane, then have Sven work in the jungle, pulling and stacking uh, and finding farm that way, roaming around a little bit. But this will this will be interesting. They're remaining. looking to secure the late game here, it would seem. 
Oh yeah, definitely have a lot of potential Five, there. Seven, and uh, Nexus, I believe, is going to be playing the Morphling here. He is used to be actually one of my favorite ra so CIS based carry players. He, he just finds farm out of absolutely nowhere, has a lot of potential to just really ramp up the farm, get some crazy CS, get some crazy farm. We're going to see a very cool pickup in BZZ's uh, Legion Commander here, 63, is going to be running that as his safe lane carry, and there's plenty I want to say about that. But first, I want to talk about one quick potential synergy between support Sven and Morphling, and that's the Sven Aghanim Scepter. 80% improved base damage on a hero that gets to choose how much agility he has? That just sounds outright insane. That's a very good point. Uh, I don't know that I've actually seen that, that strategy executed here since the patch hit, but I, I like it on paper at the very least. And Virtus Pro, they, I mean, silences, as you mentioned, are, are what kind of counter morphling, and they do have a couple of them, so he's not without his counters here, but in general, I think this should be an okay game Ten for the seconds, morphling once remaining. he gets uh, the ball rolling and kind of gets off the ground, assuming the laning phase uh, is, is not remaining. too rough. You know, no Elder Titan, Shadow Demon Duo, or something like that that'll really just cripple this hero. You know, I, I mm -hmm. like it from Power Rangers. Virtus Pro, though, you mentioned uh, this BZZ Legion Commander, and that's a hero we've seen with kind of mixed results, but BZZ has been uh, kind of one of the better LCs, I think, at least statistically. Yeah, a lot of potential on this hero, especially considering it is this uh, rubber band 6.82 that a lot of teams are trying to work out strategies that can you know, not be so hindered by it, I suppose. If you want to gain a hero, momentum on a hero, gain it on a hero that doesn't rely solely on net worth to maintain an advantage. Uh, duels is a stack that you can't measure in gold or experience, it's if you get uh, six or seven duels throughout the early mid game, then you're not going to be rubber banding as hard. Obviously, the fact that you got kills definitely boosts your numbers, but it's not going to be something that just item wise Power Rangers can match with a couple of easy pickoffs. Because obviously, they do have a pickoff oriented lineup as well with the Sven, Wisp, the Morphling. Everybody really just jumps into the fray really quickly. So. You don't want to carry that just invests in solely items to build up his late game potential. The Legion Commander has this potential in her dual stacks, and this is going to give her a huge amount of viability in just singling out a target, getting that ulti off, and essentially three-shotting them towards the late game. So we'll see how it pans out. But for now, I think it's a very smart pickup, and it's also a hero that naturally goes for the Blink Dagger, which is important against these global strats. Yes, uh, most definitely. That's a very good point. And just having some more general lockdown uh, in the mix to boot. Now, Virtus Pro looks like they're having some connection issues. Who knows what they're saying, but hopefully we can hop into it pretty quickly here. Um, yeah. How's it going, Blaze? Doing pretty good. It's been a, a lot of Dota for me recently over the past, like, two days. It's just been absolutely ludicrous obviously you guys were pretty frustrated i'm sure with the verizon issues there but i was happy to be able to jump in and do what Frust i could yes frustration is a good word uh i i was on eu duty and it went down at like uh 6 p.m right as wca was starting so i was kind of like winding down for bed and I, I heard the commotion and uh i was just woken up like i finally fell asleep then i was woken up in the middle of the night with it just like there's only one thing left to do boys Drink, and then they just went straight for the sauce. Once the, it became apparent that there wasn't going to be uh, an easy solution, so uh, awesome. yeah, it was uh, it was it was rough stuff. You know, Morphling looks kind of weird in this pause. I have to admit, he looks like uh, you see that movie, The Abyss, when the little aliens are poking their heads out. That's what he looks like. He's got that little water face. I think I've seen what you're talking about, but I haven't actually seen the movie, so I can't Jesus. be totally sure. But pretty iconic Blaze. Dude, I, pop culture is not my thing. But I watch Lord of the Rings. I don't watch <laughs> don't know, random stuff. Ah, fair enough. Lord of the Rings was better. All right, let's okay. see what's going on here with these lanes. Dire Side Virtus Pro will get loaded in. It will be BZZ on the LC headed to the top lane. Yol will be joining him on the support disruptor. G will take the DP mid. Jotam will take the Earthshaker support moving around. And Sedoi uh, will take point on the off lane centaur here looks like power rangers will be doing a safe lane try we just zick will grab his wisp shotchla will take the puck headed to the mid lane nexus on that more thing like you were mentioning and it is j4 on the position for sven leaving cheshire cat with the beautiful ohio set headed to the offline i love this set man the treants look a little goofy but boy that that staff is bad ass yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. I don't like the trans though. I think honestly, the the coolness of the staff is nullified by those wobbly, goofy little piranha plant guys. I honestly hate them more yeah. than I can express. But they, they, I, I I agree. They they look like little Venus fly traps. 
and I I don't I don't see it. I, I just don't dig the way they, the way they walk. Ah, oh, poor little buggers. First runes will come out here in just a matter of seconds. Power Rangers begins. camping out the bottom spot. J4 will find himself a bounty rune. Exactly. Up top, that's an invisibility, and it will get scooped by the Disruptor. Yeah, not all that scary, to be honest. Um, an invis rune on a hero, like, with an initiating stun, initiating slow, great, but kinetic field out of invis might catch somebody off guard, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to actually kill off Cheshire Cat here, not with uh, just Legion Commander to follow it up anyway. So I would have to say that the Bounty Rune is actually the better rune to pick up uh, in the early game unless you get a kill with that first rune, with the Invis or with a Haste or something. Mm -hmm. And nice work from the Nature's Prophet to block out the spawn camp with those uh, Treants. Times run. it perfectly so they expire right as the camp is looking to spawn, and he'll do it once more to uh, kind of Prevent the pole camp from coming out in lieu of having a ward. But Cheshire Cat, very uh, aggressive positioning here. Needs to be perhaps a little careful. They don't have the most kill potential. And he does have boots first, so should be okay. Now Jotam coming up, though. Ooh, this could be scary. There's oh, your nice. Fissure. Now y'all will drop the hammer. The odds will be oh. overwhelmed. But, oh, there's a little gap there. What? Okay. Hard to see with that animation, but it is definitely uh, the make or break one like 50 units right there That'll make it a guaranteed kill or just absolutely nothing. So kind of unfortunate from Jotam uh, Not getting the full distance. I think you can just kind of click the distance you want But he was just hoping it would pin him in just enough and he didn't want to break his uh, Yeah, uh, show his show himself too early So we're gonna see just a back and forth on the mid lane here shots though did just use his orb But cooling down in five seconds he can still use it as an escape over the forthcoming Fisher, Jotam has used the smoke. So what they need here is essentially the orb to be used once more in an offensive fashion, and then they can pin him down at least at the top of the steps on the radiant side. Yeah, Puck will go no tally, a uh, triple branch here. So he's got plenty of last hitting power, profit uh, with a pretty comparable build. Down bottom, J4, and we just sick. We'll go for a little bit of D ward. They finish off the. Uh, Dire Observer with their sentry and will grab a haste rune now uh, yes. on the Sven. So it looks like they'll move into the bottom lane and Centaur will back up with plenty of time to spare. Wisp finding his level 2 will now go back and finish off the ward. There we go. So Puck, does he have a bottle quite yet? Oh. No, it doesn't look like it. His CS score is a little bit rough out of the gate. 7-0 and zero versus the 11-5 and five on the Death Prophet. So spending all that early goal and holding back Puck's uh, mana regeneration <laughs> options. Yeah, the Null Talisman build makes it very hard to find a bottle before to pick up the two-minute rune. You'll generally still get it for the four-minute rune, but 700 gold is a pretty high number if you're not using your orbs perfectly. And he's actually used one just to maneuver a little bit. I think there's some miscommunication about that bottom rune. Either way, Reese just sick is an interesting position looking for a courier snipe. Not sure if he's going to get it, but... You have to remember at the three minute mark is when they can upgrade the courier. It gets back its full HP. It gets uh, a little bit more durability. He's going to go for it now, but if the supports are on the ball, this should not die. We'll see here. It could be a tether play for the right click, but he doesn't get the right click out. Just the tether, and there's the flying courier. So nice little cheeky play, but in the end, comes up empty handed. It was a noble effort, a close call. I, I like the attempt to try and tether across the lane to uh, close the gap and get that last auto attack off, but. Um, they were a little slow on the upgrade, so had he been in range with the tether, I think it actually would have been enough mm -hmm. to finish off the courier. But the bottle gets delivered, and uh, whatever courier this is gets to fly towards home. The Oh, it's the Virtus Pro courier, the Virtus Werebear, but too bad his, <laughs> his little uh, portrait is all messed up. He's just uh, he's <laughs> just an empty abyss. What a sad time for the Werebear. Puck does finally have his bottle. It'll be coming out just in time to secure that four-minute rune, at least hopefully first down bottom. Whoa, we'll catch the tail end of it as they dive on the first centaur. And nice Sven will draw the first blood. Yep, so, I mean, the good early movement from uh, Wisp and Sven, generally speaking, is going to enable them to be very active. The early clarities on Wisp have supplement J4's lack of mana for a couple of stuns, and they can be very active. We do see, however, a two versus two here in the mid lane. Yep, Yol comes in, connects with the kinetic field. Shotzilla will be able to orb out, but he won't jaunt to it. Now he does, trying to buy some time for Cheshire Cat, but he'll get glimpse, and this should be a kill on the Prophet. Jotam coming in, will be able to finish him off with a fissure, and in case it seems he'll get away. But meanwhile, on the other side of it, J4 comes in with a storm bolt and a couple of right clicks to secure a kill on the Death Prophet. So, end of the day, it is the Power Rangers that come out ahead, losing their I think main they've got hero, Jotam here it's too. not over yet. They're going to continue to chase down Jotam. J4 has all that yummy mana regeneration. He's cruising thanks to the tether speed, and it'll be a two-for-one trade. Cheshire Cat TPs in, makes some tree ends, and will pull some aggro off of the lane as the Death Prophet 
comes back to the tier one tower. Yeah, just uh, the fact that Sven gets two stuns in this combo is really, really good. Because you look at his mana pool, 140 uh, out of 247, that's going to take far more than 50% of his mana here. But with the help of the Wisp, he gets the extra Warcry, he gets the extra stun, and it's just uh, very easy to underestimate the power of a two-stun Sven roaming around this early on. It's not something you get to see very often. So yeah. very nice movement there, creating space for Nexus in a way, because, of course, he's just going to get as much strength as he needs to survive a simple stomp double edge combo and otherwise he can just play it put it all into agility get all the right clicks in and yeah he's gonna have a pretty good time here down on bottom already finding himself up to 31 cs over 11 for the centaur yeah doing very well keeping up about on point with bzz they're both uh, essentially free farming away uh, phase boots the first item pick up for the lc who is soon to be level six and of course that does tend to be when uh, lc will move around a little bit more and try to Rack up any of that extra damage she can find. Also picked up his magic stick now following the boots. Morphling, uh, just pulling up the gold for now. Basilius, brown boots, and a couple of tangos. Maybe looking for an early Midas. Or uh, could just be rushing the Lincoln. So a couple of options there. We'll see where he goes. Meanwhile, battle for the bottom rune. So Doyle come over. It's uh, J4 that picks up the bounty rune, but he'll get stunned. Cheshire Count using that global presence will TP in. Sadoi taking a lot of damage. He's oh, already used his hook stop. The Fissure will block him out. Oh, no. That'll secure the kill. It's J4 that grabs the kill. We just zick taking a lot of damage, but there's a stun on the Yol. The follow-up damage is here. Nexus flying through. A few more auto attacks will bring him down despite the haste rune, and he'll fall. It's a two for nil, and now Power Rangers will just look to sound the retreat. Fissure flies through. And the two Crypt Swarm will finish him off. That's now a two for one as Shotchlow flies over. Does have a Dream Coil, but won't want to use it quite yet. Duel was not used, and no damage has come out. But now BZZ may get jumped on. Puck, where's the Dream Coil? There it is. He will choose to break the tether. J4 coming in just barely gets enough mana for the Storm Bolt, and it's a dead Legion Commander. That's now a one for three. And that is where this fight will finish off. Oh, maybe not. Nexus, he wants to cruise forward, going hard onto G, but he just doesn't have the right clicks right now. Brown Poots and Basilius, yeah, not giving him a hell of a lot of damage output. There was so much potential for that fight to turn a lot sooner. Shashil had a sip in his bottle that entire time. If he had bottled the Sven, had the, the idea of getting that extra Stormhammer out on top of Dream Coil, they could have made it a double kill at that bottom rune spawn. They could have combined their abilities together. Puck already had mana for two spells. Uh, all they needed was the Sven stun, and they did have that bottle sip. Man, that could have been such a huge play. But in the end, Legion Commander does go on the other side of the tracks, and does uh, get drop down so it's not all uh, not too bad still six for two is the kill score in favor of power rangers and virtus pro they're the ones that really want more out of this early game they need to to get that blink dagger quickly he pops the stampede but it's not going to be enough to get g out perhaps going in deep a lot of right click damage but they don't have enough mana for the next wave form so stampede will do the trick and that's a four man movement on the mid lane yeah, that was pretty costly for Power Rangers, and just glancing at the graph, even though they've got a pretty sizable hero lead, 6-2, uh, to two, it's not that big of a gold or experience lead. All this grouping up in early rotations, uh, pretty costly for the Radiant team. They will put some pressure on this Tier 1 tower mid. Treants absorbing the damage here, and uh, the Glyph will come out, and that'll keep it safe for now. But down bottom, Virtus Pro will win the battle for the rune, and it will be a double damage on Sadoi, who does just head bottom and look to soak up some free farm here, and... Try and uh, be as efficient as possible while Power Rangers are grouped up as five in the mid lane. So Midas is going to be next is going to be picking up this hand of Midas here for uh, his bounty of the safe lane farm. He's going to be Midasing up a Wild Wing for some nice golden experience there, and it's important because obviously he has some great stack gains: two in strength, three Radiant in agility awesome every tower. time he levels up. Attack. So building that up is going to be very nice for him. As well, of course, he's going to be. Uh, just able to get that much more farm than we're going to be seeing from the Legion Commander. Uh, BZZ has to go for a Blink Dagger next. There's really not too much deviation in that build up. And uh, I guess the Morph effect, the Morphling has enough survivability for now and still has some good fight contribution with the waveform. Makes it so that this choice doesn't cost him too much as far as tempo. Yeah, Jotam is smoked up now, rotating in through the Radiant Jungle. We just sick will be nearby. The smoke expires. It is a 3v2. Of course, Prophet can always use that global presence. We'll see the war cry used. There's your uh, Storm Bolt out onto wow. the Shaker, and he just gets juiced. He melts down before the Nature's Prophet can even complete his channel to TP in. Yeah, and uh, obviously the Sender was considering using the Stampede to help the... Earthshaker disengaged, but by the time the stun went out, he was already pretty much dead. So, not too much choice there. Just falling back, and now the, obviously trying to hold on the bottom tier one. But a lot of early movement from 
Sven and Io has given really the tempo in favor of Power Rangers, but we also have to mention that Cheshire Cat hasn't really been on this top lane for quite some time. This means BZZ can start pushing down the tower, and this does mean as well the Nature Prophet isn't as high of a level as he could be. He's still not too bad, level 6, Radiant's alongside his companion, attack. the Sven, but it is uh, noteworthy that he hasn't just been sitting there as a traditional offlaner. Stachel is in some trouble. He'll grab the bounty room, but it will cost him his life as Yol connects with a decent uh, Thunder Strike kinetic field, and Gio just bring him down with a maxed out Crypt Swarm as he is soon to be level 9. This will probably be our first exorcism flying through here in the top as they look towards this tower. There is a glyph available for the Radiant side, so they can make a hold of this tower if they so choose. Uh, this is when Death Prophet will really start moving around and uh, coming online. As you mentioned, Nexus did pick up that Hand of Midas, been using it to much avail. Still be a little while before it really pays off, but uh, he is topping the net worth chart for now. And off to a damn good start. BZZ now about 500 gold away Radiant's from that Blink Dagger, and there's your Exorcism attack. and the Glyph at the top Radiant's Tier 1 Tower. PR are moving over to position themselves to make a hold. Yeah, I mean, they definitely want to keep these towers alive as best they can, and if they can stop the first exorcism from do bringing down a tier 1, then they've pretty much mission accomplished for the first 20 minutes of the game. We're going to see them go out. Shasha will get this Dream Coil onto Death Prophet. He drops very low, but there's the heal. Yeah, Wrath of Nature flies through, does a lot of damage to him. Now BZZ in trouble on the low ground, has a duel, but in really no way to use it. The Power Treads doing a lot of work. One more auto attack, some Wisp Balls will bring him down, but he's just too damn fast, gets off the healing salve, and will live to tell the tale. But like you pointed out, all they wanted to do was keep the tower alive. Getting hero kills is extra on top of that. Now they'll go for a counter push. No Dire Glyph is available, and it is still a victory for Power Rangers, as without Exorcism, Virtus Pro not really eager to take a team fight. Yeah, just going to just throw a quick stun out into BZZ. He does pop the heal right beforehand just to make sure they can't pursue on top of him. But in the end, yeah, they just uh, move all five heroes up. Morphling gets a little piece of the action and still going to be Radiant's able to use his Hand of Midas uh, when attack. it comes off cooldown, probably on that Centaur Nexus. But anyways, uh, yeah, just defending the Tier 1, keeping towers alive, bringing them into the mid game without too much of a deficit is going to make it pretty easy for them. Radiance Middle Tower. Yeah. Death is Prophet under now just moving into a pretty standard build. That race car, Meep Meep, I'm a Death Prophet. She's got phase boots in the drums, and now we'll find herself in Bounty Ooh. Room. Dyer's Morphling's in a bad spot here. Got Glimpse back. He will Strength Morph, so he's very tanky, but all the same, he doesn't have any mana to wave away, and he's just going to have to hoof it. So, good thing is, they don't have any follow up stuns. The Earth Shaker is back at the base, but yeah, they're obviously the. Glimpse play forcing him to walk all the way back to the well at full strength. He's going to be out of farming sh fitness for about a uh, good 45 seconds. Yeah, while we were uh, looking at that, the Dire Courier was picked off. Uh, looks like it was just the Nature's Prophet that sniped mm -hmm. it down. Didn't have any cargo, but still a nice gold bounty going the way of the Power Rangers. Uh, regardless, though, that'll be all the time the LC needs to get the Blink Dagger here at the 13-minute mark. Pretty solid timing for BZZ and... This is when LC starts to get a little more scary. Yeah, this is uh, when she needs to be scary, though. If she doesn't get, like, a kill within the next five minutes, then Radiant's the fact that they didn't do much with their attack. exorcism, they haven't gotten that much going for the LC, they're not feeling that great. We do see the tower is taking some hits here. It's going to drop down to 180 out of 1300, so far from deny range, but... Still, BZZ wants to go for blood. He doesn't just want the tower, he wants to farm up the creeps and actually look for an opportunity on a hero if it does present itself. Yeah, uh, top tier one will be safe at least for now. Sven will rotate Dyer's his way up top. He's found his level seven. The Sven has leveled himself very, very well, given that he is in the position Dyer's four. Uh, they will go on to BZZ, caught inside of the Sprout, Stormbolt to follow up, and they'll be able to bring him down easily. God's strength used, but I don't think J4 even got a God's strength auto attack off. Glimpse back on Jotchlo. Jotchlo, yeah, he'll get glimpsed back, but will he be able to survive is the better question. Stampede will secure the kill, and... They'll just jump right on top of the fairy dragon. A one for one across the map. Puck for Legion Commander. Yep, still, um, I, in this sense, I would say space created. As long as the Power Rangers are allowing Morphling to pick up an item beyond just Treads and Aquila, then they're going to be feeling much more confident. But it's still enough time for Zoe to also find his Blink Dagger. 14 minutes isn't the best of time, but it's not the worst on an offline circumstance. And he's going to be picking that up very shortly. Looks like he sold it back. He wants to pick it up at the side shop if he can. But at least for now, he is blinkless. Forgetting that the courier is dead, so not going to be able to deliver it for at least another minute. And then, of course, the travel time. I think that is definitely the uh, the right call for that one. Shotchlow now moving in, or pardon me, Cheshire Cat now moving into the Null Tally Blade Mail build, double tally. 
And just waiting on the Claymore before he can get that uh, spiky armor. The spiked carapace, if you will. Sadoi, he's got his blink. He's level 9. This is sort of the, the peak of Centaur's burst damage. And he is ready to drop the hammer. Nexus looking fresh in the lane as Yol comes in. He's got the ultimate in 10 seconds, but it doesn't matter. Nexus had a replicate oh, down. Oh, nice. That's top of safety. He just comes back, though. We just sick now in a really bad spot on this IL. Very low HP hero, low armor, the easy right clicks, and the duel successful. So that's going to be 10 bonus damage permanently on the Legion Commander. Yep. And uh, the crowd goes wild as LC gives him a show. Now, uh, pretty pretty solid. 15 minutes at least finally gets that first bit of damage. Uh, we'll see if that snowball will keep rolling down the hill. Top lane, G could be in some trouble. J4 scouting it out, ready to throw the stun. Puck has the full rotation available. Dream Coil to start things off. Out comes the stun, the relocate coming through, but they don't even need it. The orb will be enough, and EO will be the one to actually get the kill. Now, BZZ going onto the Wisp. He will get glimpsed back, and they'll rinse and repeat. Does he have a duel available? No, still on cooldown for another eight seconds. We just sick. We'll move into the tower, but a... Oh, this oh the relocate back! Oh yeah, my god. That might buy them time for the free duel. I mean, that might be just free 10 more damage for free. If, uh... Wait, no, he already... Okay, so he relocated in the first That was the right? relocate back. Yeah, that okay. was that was very jarring. It looked like a tether the way he scooted, but that was... Exactly. That was beautiful. Just created just enough space to live with about uh, two hit, two auto attacks worth of hit points left to go. Radiant Bottom tier one tower will go down for Virtus Pro. Meanwhile, on the top, they will mount the defense. BZZ will Dying come in. The Static Storm helping create spawn. some space for him. Will do on the shot slow, but he'll live to tell the tale. Now they'll turn it around. No bonus damage will come out on either side, but it is a dead Legion commander. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the Nature's Prophet does get taken out. But the difference here is that Power Rangers secured the tier one tower, will get the deny on their top. And the one for one trade, they'll be happy to trade their off laner for their the position one LC. But now the disparity will come out as G uses the exorcism, and this bottom tier one will most likely go down. Can they get this top tier one as a consolation? A glyph is standing, and we'll see if they can do it. So we do have a quick pause coming out right as the tower falls. We get a really interesting little animation right as that happens. So I don't think I've seen that one paused perfectly in time before, but there once a tower, tower stood on the bottom lane. Anyways, uh, <laughs> as far as uh, this state of affairs in the game, as we get the quick unpause, is I have Virtus Pro. They are looking to really do stuff with the Yule Scepter that's on the Death Prophet now, as well as the Centaur. They can still fight without the exorcism to an extent, but they have to be very coordinated in their movements, because PR are always going to be able to bring four people to fight. They're going to take uh, some nice tower momentum here, so J4 is not just a walking stun. He's actually going to be able to deliver some right clicks here, and yeah, Nexus is starting to get big, already moving towards that Ethereal Blade. He's going for this build that I'm actually starting to prefer in this metagame. The tempo is, is just enough that you don't necessarily need the Lincoln Sphere to be manageable and be, be able to bring disadvantages back to your fold. You can just go for some easy shotgun pickoffs very early on, just treads an Aquila, maybe even an extra Wraith Band, just to give yourself a little bit of extra stats, and then just go to town with that E-Blade. So he's going to be looking to rush that out, and there's a lot of potential for him to just pop up on the Death Prophet and one uh, extra spell on top, maybe Wrath of Nature or something, and G's going to die. So has to be very careful and use his Yules defensively whenever he can. Yeah, certainly so, and the Yules... Not quite finished. Uh, does he have that Void Stone on the Courier? Yeah, he sure does. So has all the pieces, just has to get him in the right place at the right time and uh, get that baby completed. BZZ moving into probably either a Halberd or a BKB with that Ogre Club. Any any thoughts about that here? Oh, with see relocate down bottom. We'll have to get back to that. Sadoi is actually going to be able to get out of this. He's got the TP, yeah. and there is no range for the stun. So they sorry, what was the question? Slow. Um, the, the Ogre Club on LC, Halberd or BKB? I think you have to go BKB against the Morphling here. I mean, you've got so much magic damage flying about. The Halberd is cool and all, but right now you see that Ghost Scepter, you know what's coming, and you need a BKB to respond. And he also can make sure that he doesn't take all the magical nukes and stuns right when he goes for the duel. So he can duel confidently, and uh, yeah, when he blink initiates, he won't just be completely interrupted or worse, gunned down for the duel to go the other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now we'll see Virtus Pro, four hero smoke rotation into the Radiant Jungle. 
And they are hungry for blood here. Blaze, we just zick almost in harm's way, but we'll tether over the tree line. And Cheshire Cat, he'll be the one that's left behind. BZZ blinks over, connects with the duel. They should have plenty of burst damage to bring him down, and they do. The crowd will go wild once more oh, as more damage oh. comes out, but Shotchlo, Dream Coil on three. Exorcism deployed, and PR, they want to follow up here, but they'll lose their puck, and I don't know if this is a fight they want to take. The Echo Slam comes through. It will cost the Earthshaker his life, but sets up for a lot of damage. Morphling goes down. We just sick will get chased off to the side, and now it's J4, the lone survivor. He'll try to finish off Yol, finds a kill there. It's a double kill onto the Sven, but I think he'll be hard-pressed to survive this one as BZZ blinks over the tree line. Sedoi connects with the hoof stomp, and this will be a full five hero wipe. It's Virtus Pro. That come out way ahead. Yeah, that was absolutely incredible, the way they were able to move like that. I didn't really like the Disruptor's ultimate kinetic. Like, there was a plenty of room to move around it, so it seemed it was a little bit mispossession. But uh, just the way that PR stretched themselves out there, where they lost Cheshire Cat immediately, and then they tried to follow it up with so much more. Like, the Dream Coil was amazing, and there was potential for, like, a three-man Sven stun, but the problem is the GP silence. It lasts a very long time uh, at rank... Th Three here, level five seconds, and it's just gonna make it so easy for them to choose their targets. Now dispelling the haste rune with the Yule Scepter, Cheshire Cat has nowhere to run. Yep, he's uh, he's gonna go down here. I think no doubt about it. Blade Mail gets used, and Crypt Swarm will just bring him down. Blade Mail gives you some nice chunky stats, but not enough to help you survive a one v four. So even another consolation kill for Virtus Pro as they get a little pick me up there, and all of a sudden things looking a little more rough for this Radiant side. They were way ahead, and now this Golden Experience graph dipping far into the Dyer's favor. One of the other problems with taking that engagement, even with the beautiful Dream Coil, is Morphling just is not in fighting shape right now. Sure. He's got a Midas and a Ghost Scepter. He hits like a wet noodle, Blaze. He, he's just... He needs that E-Blade before he can really start coming Dyer's in and being a threat. Yeah, attack. most definitely. He's definitely have to, gonna have to move up and get a couple more levels for the Adaptive Strike, as well as build up towards that Ethereal Blade. That's when he's in fighting form, but not right now. So all these fights for being forced out by Virtus Pro, it's putting them right back in the game, right back in the driver's seat. When they, they already have the blinks up, so from there all they need is the blink on the Earthshaker, as well as the BKB on the Legion Commander, and they can just start fighting pretty much on any battlefield. The mid-tier one, obviously, is probably what they want to take out first, since that's a really good proxy for Power Rangers to move about the map when they're not using their global abilities. And uh, it's actually going to be a mechanism pickup for Centaur. I saw it earlier. I thought maybe we could be seeing something like the Crimson Guard, but he just wants uh, raw HP in the fight and doesn't care that it costs half his mana pool to, to get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I agree. I don't know. It seems... It's also one of those, if you can rush it, I guess it's pretty good. Still an okay timing. Yeah, I don't know. I, the, the mana issues are the biggest problem with Centaur being the mech carrier these days. I, I think that's the... He already is a hero that kind of has mana issues to some degree. Uh, that was like one of the changes to him. But now we'll see. Rotation towards mid as BZZ buys himself a little bit of time. Uh, won't be enough. And they'll find another kill on this LC. And now they'll just go for a tower push. Yeah, it's it's weird to say that the Sven's going to be putting out more stuns in the fight than the Centaur. But it's absolutely true. The fact is, the Centaur will only have mana for one stun at best. The Stampede costs more, the mech costs more, and uh, I would have preferred a pipe, but Sadoi's got this mech, let's see what he can do with it. Jumping in, the stun comes on a J4, and he will be just clobbered down. Wow, even an Echo Slam used for that. The Exorcism's been deployed, and with that, Power Rangers will just try to make the defense, or make the retreat. Cheshire Cat pushing himself into the tree line here. They won't be able to find him. He'll TP out just Dyer's in the nick of time. Puck will get attack. caught inside of the Yules. Silence to follow up. Will find him, but he has an invisibility rune. Gets glimpsed back, and they've got no way to find him. But is, will oh, the AoE damage enough. be enough? It is. Yeah. Static Storm builds up damage as it progresses. So the longer you're in it, the more it's going to hurt. And yeah, that Puck. Uh, just couldn't withstand the last few ticks of that there. It is still level 1, but it, it, people really underestimate the potential damage per second. It's up to 200 towards the tail end of that, so... Gonna take this tier 1 off of that, but Morphling does get the E-Blade. Yep, and BZZ one step closer to that BKB is actually out on the Courier. No, uh, he's about a thousand gold off the recipe, attack. so the timing for him looking pretty solid, wispably moving into a mechanism of his own, just a recipe away, and only 120 gold or so off the mark. Always a good item on the Wisp. You can do that fancy double heal with the Tether. So certainly good stuff there. How scary is this shotgun now out on the Morphling? Is this like game changing or is this timing a little bit past that window where it's completely broken? He's not going to be able to one-shot anybody. Like the Disruptor, he'll bring extremely low. But right now, he 
is just going to be able to contribute a lot of damage. With the Wrath of Nature and one extra spell on top, he should be able to bring somebody from 100 0. It's, it's really a preventive measure to, for the Death Prophet to survive for a very long time. If he just the gets the uh, E Blade and then Adaptive Strike, maybe Waveform on top, then he's going to bring G Ver like into a range where he's not going to stay in the fight much longer. He's going to be in full retreat. The Exorcist won't be doing its damage. It's not here to farm heroes, it's just here to deliver that huge swapping of magical damage that uh, suppresses VP and makes sure that they're not going to be on the offensive. But we do see the BKB coming out, not only on the Legion Commander very shortly, but already up on the Death Prophet. Yeah, that's another issue they'll have to deal with. And also, Jotam has found a well-timed Blink Dagger on this Earthshaker. He's 2, 3, and 6, so he's been pretty active so far. Only level 9, but having that long-range initiation, uh, or counter-initiation as it may turn out to be, will certainly bode well for Virtus Pro. Mech complete on both sides, and everyone will kind of just go back to farming here. BZZ moves into the Ancient uh, to find that last bit of gold he needs for his BKB. Yol still pretty poor, maybe thinking about an Aghanim Scepter this game. Always a great item on the Disruptor. Can he farm it is a completely another question. But both sides, I don't want to say super passive. It's been a decently action-packed game so far, but neither team really pushing too quickly. And I think there is some hope for Yol to perhaps find an Aghanims if uh, the current pace of the game continues on. Will be a Roshan attempt from Virtus Pro. G uses the Exorcism, and as always, this makes Roche pretty easy. It will get scattered out by the Treants, but I don't think they'll really be able to contest in time to do much here. But they think differently down on the low ground. They'll find Yol. J4 just charges straight into the pit. The relocate oh. flies through. It'll be the end of the Sven to start things off. The Roshan goes down to the Radiant. It's actually picked up by the Morphling. That'll be the end of the Aegis. So maybe, just maybe, Power Rangers can do this. Now they'll lose their Wisp. Nexus comes right back up. He'll bring down the Centaur, doing everything he can. We'll bring down Jotam. It's Nexus versus the World, but finally takes a silence. And now he's on the defensive. Shotchlow comes in, wants to finish off BZZ. Cheshire Cattle gets glimpsed back to the low ground. It will be the end of the Legion Commander. G will find an unstoppable streak, though. Morphling forced to retreat, and they will lose the puck. So when it's all said and done, were any buybacks used? Just the Centaur. Virtus Pro don't get Roche, but the Aegis is used. I don't know, Blaze. That was a pretty chaotic fight. Yeah, very wild back and forth. The Roche snatch is really cool there. Getting the last hit, getting the Aegis, but it did cost them very much. I mean, obviously, the plus one on the duel. Uh, they didn't end up climbing... Claiming the Disruptor's life, like the Nature's Bravo was pretty much chasing him for a good 15 seconds straight through that fight, got glimpsed back, and didn't end up getting the kill. And then, yeah, Morphling barely gets out of dodge with his first life here. But in the end, uh, it's a bit of a wash as far as uh, progression and who's going to be able to benefit from that. I guess the big thing to consider is that VP don't have that Aegis in their hands. They can't just go five man down a lane because they don't have that second life. And obviously, PR have some great turtle utility. So in the end, the duel is pretty good. But the fact that Morphling is able to breach in this next tier of items is also really good for PR. So the BKB will be finished soon. They've got the relocate up. The exorcism is down, as they know. But we'll see if they can do anything with it. Yeah, definitely. And just glancing at the graph, it is a small gold advantage for Power Rangers, and I think that comes from mostly just getting the last hit on Roche than anything else. And also the buyback on Centaur does eat into that net worth change. Virtus Pro doing pretty solid in terms of experience, still have a nice little lead over the opposition. BKB is up on the LC. The 10-second charge was used in that last fight, and he's ready to use it once more. Smoke rotation from Virtus Pro will head towards the top lane. There is a replicate down for Morphling, so if they want to kill him, they'll have to do it pretty quickly. And BZZ looking for the duel, uses the BKB. Puck oh, comes in, Dream Coil on two, but now he'll get dueled as BZZ was magic immune, but he certainly won't have the damage to secure this kill. Puck will get caught inside of the Yules. Yol will be able to TP out just barely. BZZ gets left behind, and Cheshire Cat gets a chain lightning proc to take him down in style. Man. Nexus was playing very defensively there. He immediately left the fight with his replicant, lost a lot of mana, and obviously just teleported across the map. So the fact that the Dream Coil came in, it showed that Shasha had a lot of faith in the Wisp to keep him healed up. Uh, he used the Overcharge plus Bottle plus Magic Wand plus Mech, everything he needed for Shasha to survive. Otherwise, that would have been another duel fed away. So great play from Weechastic there, very heads up. And uh, in the end, they are able to triumph over Virtus Pro and start pushing off of that. They've got 10 seconds on the BKB of the Morphling. Doesn't have that much mana available. Uh, the second activation Dyer's of Replicate actually costs quite a bit. Attack. But in the end, they're Dyer's still willing to push in here. Five. And it's going to be a blink out from Shoslo. So yeah, they'll just force some TPs, force a fortification, and just walk away. 
Yeah, I think they'll be okay with that trade. Pretty cost-effective for the Power Rangers, and they will clear out a couple of neutral camps here. As they back it on up, Nexus has his full BKB completed. Ten seconds of magic immunity up for him. And Shotchlo, the Yules, as we talked about. Blink Dagger, now another 1,000 gold to boot, as they will kind of linger around here uh, a bit longer, and you know, Nature's Prophet will rejoin the party. Is he delivering a TP scroll here? No, okay. And well, they actually, Shashla put his bottle on him, so the empty bottle is now uh, refilled from the, the fountain, and boom goes the dynamite, so Doi dropped down to half HP. They're going to try to get more out of it with the relocate in, but there is a stampede on the coil. Yeah, but he's just kind of running in circles, nowhere for him to go, and it'll still be the end of Sedoi. Does allow his team to get here a lot faster. BZZ taking a lot of damage, forced to use yet another defensive BKB, but Nexus waveforms forward, secures the kill. Now they continue on. They find Yol, glimpse back on a Cheshire cap, but that won't make a difference. It's a one for three as they do lose their wisp in the fray, but an obvious advantage for Power Rangers, and now with no glyph, they will be rewarded with a tier two tower. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, G uses the ultimate, goes in onto the tower, Shotchlo hops over the tree line. Will do as much damage as he can, but the speedy Death Prophet will cruise away. Cheshire Cat TP's in, and now will take a lot of damage from the Ghost. Holy Toledo, he needs to be careful. Gets off the Sprout, and the Death Prophet will survive, but Cheshire Cat, living life on the edge there, Blaze. Yeah, definitely. The BKB TP forced out, though. It's a, That's actually really, really good for uh, Power Rangers as a whole. They get a tier 2 top, they defend tier 2 bottom, they get all these kills, and right now the game is, is theirs to win for sure, and uh, it's got to be Virtus Pro that have to pull just an amazing comeback, because although the graphs might show that it's only you know, was 0 to 5,000 recently, and uh, only the graphs have equalized just now on experience, Power Rangers are completely ahead in this game. They've got global control over the map, so they can farm wherever they want, and still be ready to fight, and they of course just have the the tower advantage they have the scalability advantage and the heroes and the duels have not really been coming out that hard 38 plus damage and leech commander about to be added a little bit more to it Shashlo getting the blink initiation against him yep. now it's 52 damage so that helps still 31 minutes in that that's not a game breaking amount of damage this lc is not really snowballing and We've seen BZZ use this BKB to very little avail. It's been mostly just defensive, kind of, oh shit, I don't want to try to get the hell out of here, sort of BKBs, and that just generally isn't the way you want to use it, and he'll be down to that five second charge before you know it. Death Prophet is getting pretty big though, still the leading farmer in the game, uh, keeping up blow for blow with the Mightest Morphling. Uh, does now have a Heart of Tarask in the inventory, so she's at about 2.9k HP, and uh, feeling, feeling pretty darn tanky right now. There is a point booster up on Yol, so he will be looking towards that Aghanim Scepter. Still quite a ways off, but is now one step closer. Smoke rotation will commence. Roche Dyer's will be up for quite some while. Is under attack. Three heroes from VP wrapping around the backside, and they may find themselves a Wisp and Sven. Yeah. They do have Relocate. They do have uh, BKB TP. Uh, there are a couple ways to get out of this one, but they just revealed themselves, and yeah, it's going to be very quick. Echo Slam comes out on the J4. Relocate oh, will nice relocate, relocate him out. Attack. And that will cancel look the at, duel. Look at the Legion Commander, by the way. She's like running over cliffs trying to get back to the, the Radiant Fountain there. She's just uh, yeah, hell set, hell bent on uh, finishing that duel. Oh, and he actually brings the Sven oh. back with him. BKB on God's strength deployed. I'll chop down the Earthshaker. Now we just Zick taking a lot of damage. BKB's deployed. They will lose the Wisp. J4 playing a little ring around the Rosie, but now support coming in. BKB used by Nexus. Needs to start morphing. Is that Death Prophet doing a hell of a lot of damage? She'll get caught. Sedoi comes in. It'll be the end of the Morphling. They also lose their Sven, but down goes the Centaur. Puck now hiding into the tree line. G still able to survive. The Ghost doing a hell of a lot. It's a three for two. Shancho Radiant Invisibility oh. Rune will keep him alive. Radiant Courier does fall, though. A bit of miss micro there. And the Dire side will grab a bit of extra gold following that fight. A two for three. A noble effort from Power Rangers, but not what they are looking for. And Virtus Pro will take a decent net worth advantage. Yeah, that was definitely a good fight for VP. Not what they wanted originally. Yeah, they bit off more... <laughs> than they expected with the Sven coming back with a full God Strength BKB. He went man mode there, but they still have the Stampede. They could still control positioning, and that's why I feel the BKB was a weird pickup on the Sven. Like, you're not going to get that many right clicks up against the lineup with a Centaur. The bottom line is you throw your stun, you wait for it to cool down, you throw another stun. That's how support Sven works. But that BKB kind of showed that he's like, okay, well, I can just jump in. I can, I can fight this out. I can survive. I can do more work. And the problem is uh, with all these things like Fisher's blocking him out, 
Stampede. It's it's problematic. We will see Cheshire Cat almost get the pick up on Yule, but he will TP out. It's going to be the relocate to send the Storm Hammer the way of G. Nice BKB comes out from him very quick with a phase drum and Yule's, and it looks like it'll be enough for him to get out. But he gets greedy with the bounty rune. That could have been a big mistake. Yeah. Uh, Shaslo does not have range for the Yule's though, so he will still get out. That was a pretty close call. BKB just expiring, and sure, bounty runes are nice, but not if they're going to cost you your life. And now DP looking a lot more farmed, a good uh, 3k up on this Morphling. He, unfortunately for Nexus, he hopped into that fight very bold, very brave, but the BKB just doesn't do anything against the Death Prophet ultimate, and that's what really cut him down as soon as they hopped into that last big engagement. And now we'll start to tank up a little bit, grabs an ultimate orb, a couple of different routes he can take here, the Mantis style, uh, the Scotty, or the Lincolns. Any thoughts about what that'll morph into here, Blaze? Yeah, I'd say most likely it's going to be the Scotty. Just uh, enables him to do a little bit more work uh, in a direct right-click fashion after the E-Blade comes out. It also gives him much-needed durability. And it's nice in the duel, uh, doing a orb effect to BZZ so that he's not doing as much right-click damage directly. So I like the Scotty here. I would also really like to see a Helm of the Dominator come out for him because you're talking about that exorcism causing him problems. Well, you're not going to be... The only way you're going to nullify that is by sitting on as much agi as possible to keep your armor up. And uh, then the only way to keep not have to more strength throughout the fight is by having lifesteal. So if he gets Dominator, he gets bonus armor. He's able to lifesteal through the fight so he doesn't have to immediately morph strength. And uh, I just think that in conjunction with Scotty would give him exactly what he needs to deal with VP's damage threats. Yeah, certainly uh, cannot argue with that. And maybe Wisp will be looking towards something like a Vlad's coming out. Before too long here, looks like he wants power treads first, but just getting that extra armor aura, armor aura just helps out the team in general against uh, the DP. Now Sven has a plate mail, either an Assault Karas or a Shivas coming out for him with 1,800 gold pulled up. Uh, maybe looking for that Hyperstone, but feels like a Shivas may be a little more likely. A gift here. from the Tempest of Battle. Yeah, it's, it's a hard call. I think the AC is really nice, but all the same, if you stack the negative attack speed between Scotty and Shivas at the time that the Legion Commander doesn't expect, mm -hmm. she might have a hard time of it. She's not a high attack speed hero without her press the attack buff, so the negative attack speed could really hinder her damage output. And of course, the Chivas has great utility in general, getting the clear vision, the damage nuke. So we'll see what he wants to build up. I really thought he'd be building th more things more along the lines of like the Agadim Scepter, like you said, maybe the Vlads, um, Blink Dagger is what I was kind of hoping for, but no, in this case, he, he goes for a bit of a man fight route with the Black King Bar, the plate mail, he definitely will persist through the fights a lot more than the normal Sven would. Yeah, and speaking of Shiva's, Death Prophet has completed hers, so she is just that all-around tanky presence at this point. And with that, they will move into the Roche pit. Exorcism has been deployed. Sadoi is smoked up, ready to blink in and make something happen. Will go in onto the Replicate, reveals himself, and that's the kind of start that uh, Power Rangers were looking for. Roche taking a lot of damage. They're not doing down that quickly. Sadoi will get initiated on. BKB used by J4. God will pop the Shivas straight away, but they lose their Centaur to start off this fight. He did manage to use a stampede oh! with a little avail. A huge dunk comes out, and that'll set up this fight on the wrong foot for Power wow. Rangers. They'll lose three, and Virtus Pro will get what they're looking for. Cheshire Cat to TP home. He gets glimpsed. That'll interrupt him. Can they bring him down this time? He'll get silenced. He's dead. It's a two for four. Shachlo lives, but just barely. Earth Shaker with the turn. That's the kind of play that's going to put them right back in the game. Shot him with like triple stun on four heroes there. An amazing Echo Slam after shocking everyone. And of course, they have the damage to follow it up. Another huge fight for Murtis Pro. BZZ gets the Aegis. He gets some nice farm. He's got the AC. And uh, now the, the physical damage is going to be real. Like uh, before the War Cry made it so that in a good portion of the fight, the damage isn't going to be that substantial, but you have the negative five on top of that. You just need a couple more job initiations like that, and my goodness, you are right back in this game. So they have some real team fight, and Pierre have to start respecting that because every time they try to commit and just you know gun down the centaur who already has a lot of effective HP, it's just uh, not been working. They clump up because they have short range heroes like the Morphling, and in the end, Virtus Pro come out on top. Very very nicely done. Mm -hmm. Now Death Prophet up to another 3,500 gold following that team fight. And uh, we'll have an open inventory slot. We'll see where G wants to round things off. We'll, of course, eventually uh, look towards uh, BOT upgrade BZZ. We'll disconnect and hopefully can get back in here momentarily. Following that fight, Yol gets a huge benefit and will be about 
400 gold away from his Aghanim Scepter, and that is huge. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, it does stop the item usage when you're stuck inside of his Static Storm, so if he gets Initiation before you've used that BKB, forget about it. And that's where things start to look a little bit more scary for the Power Rangers. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, uh, the big issue is that Disruptor's not really here right now. Like, he doesn't get to contribute anything to the fights because they're up against three BKBs. They're up against the Blade Mill. Prophet chooses to turn damage instead of negate it. And uh, they're really under no pressure when it comes down to this Disruptor. And uh, that's why this Agony Disruptor is going to be so impactful is because their BKBs are being used in every fight. They're dropping down to seven or less seconds on each hero. And that means that we're going to be seeing them used a little bit more hesitantly each time because you have to make the most of every precious second once it's down to five. So the longer they wait to pop the BKB, the more opportunity Disruptor has to negate its use entirely with this Aghanim's ultimate. Yes, sir. So where are we looking at here? Puck has a gem and ultimate orb, but I think looking for that Scythe of Vice, pretty safe to assume. And it will indeed be the Scotty on the Morphling, as you pointed out, and he's actually damn close. He's like mm -hmm. 100 gold away from uh, that Orb of Venom and Point Booster that he needs. Yeah. I actually think it has it. They did reduce the cost of Orb of Venom, so he's in a great spot right now. And uh, I'm not 100% sure if I would rather see the Scythe or the Lincolns on the puck. Because, of course, you can put the Lincolns on your allies, so it mm -hmm. could be huge nullifying some, some major aggressive damage output on the Morphling. But... At the same time, they're still not that worried about single target threats. Like, you're worried about the duel, but that's usually coming out on the lower HP heroes, like the, the Wisp and such. If you duel the Wisp, then you have nothing to worry about in a fight, usually. So, uh, might not be that big of a deal with that. And uh, the other thing is the Yules. Like, nothing else you really care to nullify. Maybe Glimpse. If, if the Nature Prophet teleports and immediately the Puck throws on the Lincolns to counteract a Glimpse, that's next level. But... Generally speaking, you're going to get more throughput from the, the Hex, so I guess that's what I would expect from him. And uh, beyond that, uh, we'll have to see if the Fearing wants to go a damage route himself. Cheshire Cat, he's got 2,400. He could go for that Mjolnir and just kind of follow through with the build he's already gone for. And uh, I want to mention that he's carrying the wards here. I'm not sure if he's buying them. It looks like he is. But in either case, he's been using, like, for example, if you look in the Dire Jungle, there's a Radiant Observer Ward that he actually TP'd into the trees completely invisibly and then uh, just tell, put the ward out just outside the tree line. So essentially, they don't know that's where there's no way they could have scouted him placing it. And uh, that gives them some free vision before they pick up the gem. Yeah, uh, some cute stuff you can do with the Nature's Prophet. Looks like we will have a decently timed pause here, though, Blaze. Uh, BZZ having some computer issues and the estimated restart time, three to five minutes. So... Hmm. At least we don't have it as bad as Coddle Guy. I, uh, oh I was gosh. sleeping through most of it, but I, I woke up to see some tweets and some Reddit threads about his... Uh, oh, God, no, please, God, oh, no. Like, apparently one game was, like, three hours long or something. Like, what the hell's going on? I, I'm not sure if it was an exaggeration, but, like, 25 remakes. Like, they... they I know they remaked at least six times, but it might may or may not be an exaggeration for 25. I really don't know. Uh, well, I know Why so many? What's the, the issue? Um, con connection like com complete disconnects from teams. I don't know if it was DDoS type things or if it was the event had some issues with their technical stuff. In either case, uh, teams were disconnecting hard, and the, yeah, they could just couldn't complete more than several minutes of the game at a time. Well, that is very disappointing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess we can't complain too much, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Pauses, man. The the bane of the live casting experience, I suppose. Yeah. If you were just doing a replay cast, you just fast forward through. No problem at all. I guess if the replay is broken up into like 18 different games, that doesn't really help. But Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's true. That's, that's a fair point. Uh, but we'll oh, reconnect, so I guess we're guess we're uh, coming in here. Blaze, did you did you buy any crates? Did you get Dusky the Husky? Man, I, I want that uh, Timber Rare, for, and the uh, Gyrocopter looks really sweet, too. But oh, the yeah. Dusky, the Husky, man, you can't you can't not get that guy. That's the, He's so adorable. <laughs> yeah, uh, D Dusky is is pretty cute, I, I have to admit. When I first saw the model, I was like, that is a pretty cute courier. Oh, um, dude. Like, 10 seconds after I saw the tweet t t teasing it and showing off the courier itself, I was like, all caps at LD, that is the most fucking adorable thing I've seen. Like... <laughs> 
Yeah, it's it's the best car here, one hundred percent. Captain Bamboo, step aside. Yeah, I, I like his name too, Dusky the Husky. It's so it reminds me of the Starcraft caster H to the Husky Husky here. <laughs> oh god! All right, I Scotty's been picked up. So Nexus, he's online. He's tanky. He's got the utility slow, and he's ready to rock and roll. He will just barely Midas that Centaur as the Wrath of Nature flies through. Uh, where are we in terms of item progressions? Has anything else happened uh, since this quick resume? Nope, doesn't look like it. Three BKBs on the Radiant side, and so far just two on the Dire. You mentioned uh, Pipe on the Centaur would have been a little better than Mech, but he'll find the best of both worlds and has now completed his Pipe of Insight. But furthering kind of his mana struggles, I guess at this point it's not as big a deal for the Centaur, but you know, that's, that's, just, that's about 350 mana right away. That's half his mana pool that he'll have to use just to pop the Mech and the Pipe. Mm -hmm. True, but now he obviously has more. His intelligence gain isn't too bad. The big thing is, I think, the timing of the items. Like, I feel the pipe would have been doing doing so much more when the Legion and the Death Prophet didn't have BKBs. Now they do, so it's kind of just another extra helping hand. But it's not like the this changes the game. This makes them survive. So G having to deal with the BKB is, in my opinion, a direct consequence of him not going for the pipe earlier. And if you look at it, his BKB is already down to five. A couple of them were used just to BKB TP, but even still, like... This BKB is down to five seconds and will be for the rest of the game. Yep. No way to change it. Eh, compliments of this new patch here. Bottom Dyer's lane, tier two tower will take a attack. lot of damage. There is a glyph, and Virtus Pro will use it. Fortified. They were angling to pressure the mid tower, but they'll let it stand, and they will come back to try and make a hold here. Nexus will finish it off. He hangs around a bit too oh. long, and it'll cost him his life. Static Storm, the dunk, and everything else come out to bring him down. And tower for the Morphling. I think Virtus Pro will be kind of okay with that, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I'm, anytime you can kill the Morphling without him doing anything, no BKB, no Morph, uh, you can be pretty happy with it. Obviously, the tower falling, it kind of sucks, but uh, the big thing they have to look for is not just the gold that it gives, but oh, okay, mid, duel will come out of shot slow, nice pickoff there, and the relocate just not close enough. We just like, wasn't prepared to respond to that. Tether range is pretty large, but you have to be right there. This is scary. Throw. There's no buyback on the Morphling for 50 Radiant seconds. This will at least be a tier two attack. tower. Puck can buy back if need be, but all of a sudden, Vertus Pro are in a great position. I think they'll got try to go high ground Radiant here. G has an exorcism. Has this is this is startling, Blaze. Tier 3 is going to go down despite the fortification, but we'll see if they can go for the racks. That's the big question here. Just PR are prepping for it. They've got Mjolnir, they've got their AC, they're bringing everything together for this perfect storm of destruction right when the Morphling respawns. But the racks are dropping quick. They're right click. They're trying to decide what to focus. First, the range, which is a tough decision, but in the end, they get both, so it doesn't really matter. Top lane, though. We do already see the AC relocate a god strength movement with the overcharge. They get the tier 3 on top, they force Sedoi back. And so that means it will only be one lane of racks, and they send them packing with a, a quick little punch on the back. But yeah, we'll see them. The relocate now expired, and the, as the dust settles, the big thing here is the racks are gone. So now we have to be looking at this next Roche. It's going to be up in uh, a decent amount of time. But yes. when it does, there are no towers to TP2. There's no tier twos on the mid or bottom for the Radiant. There's only one tier two left for Virtus Pro. So they have to be careful about how they position across the map, and when that row spawns, everybody's gonna be gunning for it. Yeah, now all of a sudden, Virtus Pro in a great spot here. I like the play from Power Rangers to at least get something out of that trade and find a tier three tower and force back the Centaur, but Virtus Pro have taken command of this game for the most part. And this is where LC is starting to get pretty scary. Aegis will uh, be looking to expire pretty soon, actually very soon here, but plus 88 damage, uh, 4,200 gold. Legion Commander is officially online and starting to mm -hmm. hit pretty damn hard. Yeah, not too bad at all. She is down to five second BKBs, as uh, we were talking about that before. But yeah, if she is able to build up one good item like a Heart of Tarrasque or something, she's going to be able to really be a real threat in the fight. So uh, I've seen Heaven's Halbert work for a late game Legion Commander when enemy BKBs are at five. But for right now, they're eight plus, and it, it might not be the most relevant. Yeah. Um, Blade Mail could still be an option. Usually an earlier game pickup if you want to go for it. Um, what else do we see? I mean, even just a Mjolnir for a little bit of extra damage output is maybe not mm -hmm. a bad choice here. I think Blade Mail was a lot better when dual negated lifesteal, but since it doesn't, yeah. you can still kind of get a little bit benefit of and the little more damage you do, at least you're getting that. They don't actually don't get the stun out on Legion because she does use the BKB to cover it, so that relocate was ill-advised, and now they're going to be p punished for it pretty heavily. It should just be the Wisp to come back here. Yeah, he will be the solo sacrificial lamb here, and 
Although he doesn't have buyback, he is the Whoa. 50 seconds. Yeah, Shashla, where are you? What are you doing? How did that happen? How did he get back up there? Was he? I didn't see. It. He wasn't with the wisp unless he like face shift immediately. He might have face shifted, and we just didn't see the animation. Yeah, I, I didn't see there. a tether animation when he came back. All of a sudden, the puck just appeared. So and that's one of those I'd like to run back the replay and check it out as BZZ down bottom. We'll get initiated on. He presses his attack, and that'll be enough to keep him alive as some support has made it back to the Tier 3 tower, and he will live. He finds the Reaver, and uh, will be looking towards either a Heart or a Satanic. We'll get initiated on once more, but his four staff back is J4. Throws out the Stormbolt. Wrath of Nature will take him down decently low, and the E-Blade flies through, but BKB is used. He'll be okay. The system space creation is in the top lane. Virtus Pro Radiance will pressure this tower Tier 2 tower. Some attack. TP's back from Power Rangers. They will try to make a defense. DP has the double ulti available. The refresher is off cooldown. And, oh, LC finds a kill on the retreat onto the Sven. Meanwhile, fight breaking out of the Tier 2 in the top lane on the Radiant side. BKB's used from the side of Power Rangers. G pops the ulti, will press forward. Nexus will survive, but they're getting completely repelled. Out comes the Yules. That'll stop him dead in his tracks. Allow the time for the Ghost to come in and tick him down. Now the tower will be under heavy pressure, and it will be G Radiance that secures the tower, tower kill with just fallen. a single ulti, still has the refresher, so they could look to re-engage if need be, depending on how Power Rangers handle this. Now Shachlo comes in, catches the Disruptor inside of the Yules, will go blow for blow, but another fight breaking out on the backside. They'll find the Wisp. G will be able to bring him down alongside Sedoi. Meanwhile, on the top, Shachlo will find the kill onto the Disruptor, but Morphling takes a lot of damage, and Virtus Pro, they're not done yet. Shotchlo is in the side of the secret shop. He'll get initiated on. Jotam's oh, there with the totem. The duel. BZZ brings him down. Now back in the top lane. It'll be Cheshire Cat looking to perhaps TP home. Won't be able to find it. And G will just go blow for blow with him. Uses the Shivas. In comes Sedoi. The double edge to bring him down. Invert his pro. Just come out way ahead in this exchange. The team fight recap useless because it doesn't tag, uh, tag them all together. But still, it's Virtus Pro with a big lead. Yeah, I don't know how you fail to Yules or Face Shift when you see a Earth Shaker dropping down his totem right in front of you. But eh, he does get caught out there. The chain stun is legit. Another duel for BZZ. For those wondering on the top lane, the puck was tethered and just used his Face Shift instantly, so it was very difficult to see. But uh, check the combat log, and that was the state of affairs. Now the Exorcism coming down on these top racks, and uh, they really just need to bring everybody to it. They've got some lifestyle on Morphling, not a full Dominator, just the Morbid, so he does have goal for buyback, and they will go in. Yeah, Nexus pressing forward here. BKB's used to plenty. The duel comes out onto J4. BKB will help keep him alive as the pipe has been used. Stampede, and it will be the end of the Sven. Nexus in the front lines, doing as much damage as he can. Puck is the only one that's bought back here, so there will be a second wave from the Power Rangers, but they've already lost two. It's a 5v3 on the field as Sedoi comes in to try and zone them out. The barracks will be exposed, and they will be brought down. This is two lanes of racks now down for the Power Rangers. Virtus Pro that much closer to securing the win. Orb flies through. Through, and Sedoi still zoning effectively. Jot him with the dunk oh. onto Nexus. Yol comes in with the ultimate, yeah, and Nexus will go down. They lose their Earth Shaker, but a worthy trade is now the puck will phase shift and gets hoof stopped right away from Sedoi. Beautiful timing before the waning rift can come out. Buyback on the Morphling, but this seems to be a lost cause as Cheshire Cat goes blow for blow with BZZ. It won't end in his favor. Now he'll buy back. And the adaptive There's strike the flies through from Nexus, but it's another duel from BZZ. Nexus in big trouble. We're just barely the LC is able to survive. Gets the damage and goes down shortly after Nature's Prophet. It'll be a dieback. It's a full team wipe for Power Rangers. No buybacks remaining, and that should be it. Virtus Pro have secured the win. GG, well played, is called. Mortal Kombat right here. Yeah, man, just entering the arena fearless is BZZ as he cleans that up and ends the game with 160 bonus damage from Duel. Really making that lead to Commander work for him. And just gotta say, Virtus Pro moved very smart in that, those fights. Just uh, kind of finding uh, opportunities to break apart the fights onto two fronts, uh, picking off the weak uh, stragglers and finding opportunities to just go in and fight, uh, not even 5v5, but like 5v2, 5v3, despite the fact that PR were relatively close together. They they picked them apart, they got the kills they needed to, and those silences were crippling against the Morphling. Uh, yeah. Nexus popped his BKB pretty early in the fight, but he just couldn't morph against so many abilities coming out from Virtus Pro. So in the end, he could not survive, he could not sustain, he got just chopped down, and obviously we see Virtus Pro bringing it back 48 minutes in it looked bleak but now they show that they're the top dogs and that puts them in contention for some top four slots yeah we'll make them seven and four and still a chance to make it to the top 
We're going to have a quick break, guys. Team Tinker versus Secret scheduled to get started in about a minute's time. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back after this break.